Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Again, I'm Natalia, uh, Head of Marketing at SEMrush uh, Market Research. SEMrush is a marketing platform with 10 million uh, users worldwide, which provides some solution and data for digital marketing teams and agencies globally. So let's dive to um, market situation, e-commerce industry trends, overall trends of the technologies, and we'll see the performance of top um, players on e-commerce markets. So first of all, there is a trend of e-commerce industry globally right now. So we see overall it's growing. Yeah, there are some spikes, there are some drops, but anyway, it's growing. There was a good uh, growth in 2020, the best uh, growth in 2021. There is even a growth in 2022 uh, at the second half of the year because the first one, uh, first part of the uh, year, it was really hard because markets were in shock with the um, with the geopolitical situation, which is complicated. Um, this is a trend in Europe, so we actually can see that that's growing really well as well. Um, maybe there is some slight drops and spikes, but overall the growth is here. In dollars, uh, e-commerce industry is growing really, really well. There was a huge leap in 2021. Uh, anyway, in 2022, there is a good growth as well, and there is such a good positive forecast for the future of the industry. So mobile dominates again. 62% of users um, are using mobile for their online shopping. And actually, the desktop started just uh, getting a little bit more shared during pandemics. But then, again, people are now more active. They are on the go. They shop online more and more. And um, anyway, we have to not neglect the desktop. Because anyway, there is 40% of users who still buy on desktop. And this is a huge amount of shoppers, right? So in the list of top countries um, uh, contributing the traffic to the websites of e-commerce, we still see the um, companies, uh, the countries, sorry, with the highest GDP. And there's US, UK, Germany, and so on. So this is interesting that last year UK was at the second place and uh, Germany was third. And this year they just switched. So, um, top e-commerce market players, there is no surprise that we see Amazon, Walmart, eBay, AliExpress, and so on. Interesting to see that this in short list of top 10, we still see Amazon regional websites like French, UK, and German. Also, we can see, we can notice that there is a decline in traffic year over year for the most uh, of the players, but um, yeah, again, it can be connected with a winding down business in some countries and also a very unstable economical situation and recession right now. So just a few words on the global view. Uh, we can see that Amazon dominates almost in every region, but still there are a very strong and great top, um, um, top uh, local e-commerces as well, like Brazilian Mercado de Libre, Japanese Rakuten, Polish Allegra, and so on. And also in Middle East region, we can see that there is a two Turkish e-commerces out of top three. So um, in the top of 30 websites uh, in the MIA region, we can see a lot of differences. So for example, uh, seven German websites, eight Turkish websites, five French. We also can see Dutch, um, Polish, um, um, Greek as well here. There is one. So uh, how people are coming to the websites uh, of e-commerce? Overall, we see that direct as a channel dominates here and it's still growing. It means that people are coming to the very known websites, just typing their domain name in the browser, and as well can use the bookmarks to get them very quick access to, um, to their favorite e-commerce and so on. So it means that brand awareness becomes a really powerful tool for e-commerce marketer. Also, we can't uh, neglect the search and referral 
as a uh, source of traffic because Google uh, people still Google things and Google it a lot and as well they can be attracted by any kind of your product on other partner or any other website as well. So we can see that interest in this year um, is mostly focused on sports product, on electronics and clothes as well. And people are buying so much on marketplaces. This is a curious slide about the top products of uh, Amazon. And we can see the traditional iPhone, AirPods, Apple Watch and so on. But also we can see dresses, gaming chair, Crocs and so on. So we can see that the pattern still is the same. Sports, electronics and clothes. So the second part of my presentation will be about the future and technologies. So I would like to start with not very new but still quite new and good working thing is social commerce. Meaning that uh, on social platforms there is an option to do a purchase for users and it can be available on uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and Pinterest and so on. And overall Facebook and uh, Instagram started this option in 2020 and they claimed, like according to the company, we see that uh, they're saying that 64% of the whole uh, range of users uh, had made at least one purchase via this option. This is a huge number, yeah. And uh, we expect a huge growth of social commerce overall, and the biggest spenders will be Generation Z and Millennium. So, uh, in this case, we have to think how we, uh, how we have to adapt in a better way our communication, um, our promotional campaign, messaging, offering, and so on, just to really access to our target audience. And in this case, we have to keep in mind that a generation difference matters really. So the next thing interesting is programmatic advertising. This is very new and cool thing. And actually, programmatic advertising is an artificial intelligence program which buys and, and plays the ads automatically by itself. So meaning that you as advertiser don't have to waste your time on negotiations, on pricing, on placement, and so on. And the program can do it all by, by itself. And uh, the great benefit here that that's quite cheap and this is affordable even for small businesses. And in this case, small businesses can really compete with the companies with the largest budget because the program just doing the relevant advertising placement and that's it. Also, we have to keep in mind and keep an eye on new payments uh, systems and uh, payment um, uh, methods because it's just changing so quickly. Um, there is a great number of startups of fintech and they are providing new, new things uh, to, to the markets overall. And we see that um, a lot of people buy in the internet, a lot of people pay in the internet, and the digital penetration has grown from 52 to 61% in 2022. And actually, it's just we expect it to be growing as well. And in this year, the, there is expected such a good growth and development of different payment methods. Uh, development of payments by cashless cards, virtual cards and wallets and so on. And as well uh, using the um, buy now, pay later, instant loans and peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, payments as well. And also uh, different schemas of uh, recurrent payment systems as well, like with rewarding and discounts and so on. And also there is a lot of work um, focused on making them very easy to pay instantly from different countries because now we see that that's not possible for every country and there is a lot of change, uh, a lot of different things in uh, financial systems of the countries and uh, yeah that can be an, um, a challenge uh, for this year but there's a lot of startups who is working on it also, we see that the number of cashless tra transactions is growing really good and it's expected to be uh, grow and it's expected to be um, to have a growth of 82% by 2025. We can see that in Asia there is a great penetration of digital and cashless payments already and it's expected to grow like exponentially and also the growth is expected in other regions. 
So Web3. I think that there is a lot of conversation around this topic uh, this, uh, these days, right? Uh, Web3 is interesting thing because we started from browsers, uh, like first e-commerce started, then social media platforms appeared, and uh, then uh, services like Amazon, uh, not Amazon, but Airbnb and Uber just changed, uh, changed absolutely the business uh, models and um, industries overall. Also, we started think mobile first, and now there is artificial intelligence, blockchain, um, cryptocurrencies, everything just changing the web again. So, uh, Web3 is done, is created with the help of blockchain technology. And blockchain is really cool. Um, this is a very big thing which can uh, really um, give us a lot of opportunities for the future. Um, so in this case, I would like to highlight that with blockchain we can create a virtual identities. And uh, blockchain helps users and uh, companies communicate and uh, verificate the identities as well um, because everything is noted in blockchain and can be modified, copied or removed and so on. So every information about deals, payments, communications and so on, everything is kept. And uh, also, uh, so this is really a safe uh, thing. And also, which is important that people, like users, can uh, give an access to a part of the, uh, their private data and then revoke it as well. So it makes um, the blockchain system uh, which respects data privacy as well. So how brands can benefit? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. First of all, um, brands can understand who are the loyal customers and provide them with the specific things. Also, it's possible for users to connect with the wallet, so it makes it uh, very easy for them to purchase later. So yeah, it's very good for brands as well. Also, they can reward users with tokens, with exclusive um, content, with exclusive events, and so on. So this is really great system for the development of creative ideas. How users can benefit? Also, users can have a very quick access to the system, right? Users can have an access, like early access to specific product drops for discounts, for exclusive events. Uh, they can have like kind of VIP supporting and so on. They can even have an uh, artificial intelligent assistant who can help them shop or uh, support them um, in, in their experience as well. Um, so, yeah, again, for users, there are a lot of stuff. They also can uh, collect a lot of tokens and then use it for something and get in the cashback as well. So, in this situation, we see that NFTs become the loyalty cards and cryptocurrencies uh, become the loyalty points for users. So, this is um, Rainbow, um, uh, Bitcoin Rainbow price chart, uh, which shows that, yeah, Bitcoin right now, uh, has not the best time overall, but there was the same stuff several times. So there was an increases and declining and so on. Anyway, um, the technology is really awesome. And uh, in future, it will be used uh, a lot, maybe with some changes, but anyway, it will be used a lot for any kind of businesses. So in this, uh, um, I would like to say that customization and personalization is really important for users while they have an experience on the website. And with artificial intelligence, it becomes easier for e-commerce to satisfy users. For example, today we have an artificial intelligence programs that can help us generate content communicate with the user, respond to their questions and requests and so on, like ChatGPT, for example. A few years later, uh, artificial intelligence will be uh, able to suggest something. Like, for example, the system from Samsung NLG for the fridges, like there is an AI camera which can scan the fridge and tell you and suggest you what you have to buy because you have short on some products. In a few years later, it is expected that artificial intelligence will be able not only to make suggestions, but also making decisions and even order something online by itself. I think that you have heard a lot about ChatGPT. 
Uh, because, yeah, there's a lot of conversation around this topic right now, not uh, among um, only digital marketing, but, yeah, other people as well. And just short um, uh, description, the chat GPT is like a chatbot created by OpenAI of Elon Musk, and it provides an option to when people can put an answer and then generate texts, short and long te texts, and um, it can be done like quite a good quality and in several minutes. So how we can benefit for e-commerce? Uh, first of all, for example, we can create a personal communication for user, like for email, for example. Also, we can uh, create a product description, eye-catching, great quality, and uh, say optimized as well, and so on. Also, we can generate tons of social media posts for, uh, for our campaigns. They even propose an option to make an integration with WhatsApp uh, to make it available for businesses to communicate via chatbot with the customers easier. So I, for the final words, I would like to say that um, right now we see that for people it's very important to have a great user experience and we have to work to provide it. They uh, have to have an opportunity to buy where they want and pay how they want and so on. Right now we see that um, artificial intelligence is a great force. We understand how useful it can be and we understand um, how it can give value both for customers and for businesses. That's it. Thank you very much. Wow. That's it. I mean, lots of things going to change, right? <laughs> Boy. Any questions? And uh, the family one. Um, hello. Uh, hello. Thanks for the presentation, first of all. I wanted to ask, um, based on your experience, I guess, and what's your, what's your opinion now with ChatGPT and BARD coming up, and then the implementation of ChatGPT and Bing, the, the open AI in Bing, do you think this is going to help accelerate the trends even more towards uh, AI approaches? Yeah, thank you very much for your question. I think that this is an important point of this presentation because we can see now that ChatGPT just blowing up the markets and there is so much conversation and people see a lot of values uh, overall for that. And I think that this is the first biggest boost uh, to the general public to use it for the business because it's so easy and now it's free. I don't know when it will be monetized, but anyway, for now it's free uh, and it it works really well and people just now can understand that yeah this is something that artificial intelligence is capable to do good so they try they start to believe in it and then we'll see how it will be developed because i know that uh, there's a lot of projects uh, by elon musk and jeff bezos as well uh, around the artificial intelligence that started from chat gpt they even thinking about the providing api for that and making um, um subscription uh, just very cheap stuff and so on. So this is kind of example of very affordable uh, artificial intelligence program. I think that this, yeah, that's a very big push for the future. Hi there. My name is Elias, and I have a question regarding the modernization of the e-commerce. Uh, with these things going on with the modernization uh, with the e-commerce, do you think the regular basis stores will be instinct? Um, that's a good question, very tricky one. I think that anyway people right now still have such a good um, opportunity to go to some places, you know, like to feed the clothes and so on, for example, right? I think that maybe the part of uh, the um, uh, real shops can be omitted in the nearest future because we can do a lot of things online. Like for example, even a lot of people uh, getting the products from uh, shops online right now, right? And But the clothes, I think that these kind of things may be uh, avoided a little bit later because people still love to go to some places and, um, and see the real things. 
Um, this is not the case of electronics, for example. As we have seen in Amazon, there is a huge amount of different electronic stuff that people just buy online all the time. Uh, there is a rising um, trend on clothes as well, but it depends on the clothes. Uh, but anyway, in the, the future, I believe that that's possible that uh, physical uh, shops will be just, you know, reduced in numbers significantly. We have more virtual shops, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Natalia. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.